Hey Liliana, welcome back. Hi again, Daniel. <laughs> Today is, uh, is holiday here in Colombia. Oh really? Why? Because it's uh, St. Joseph uh, holidays. It was last week, but uh, they always move to the next, uh, or to the following uh, Monday, the religious uh, holidays. Ah. So, uh, yes, most of people uh, go out because it's a uh, holy week. It's the, it's right. The, Everybody goes on vacation. Yeah, so, but uh, today is it's, it's, uh, a really sunny morning. So okay, we'll nice. What happened. <laughs> because in, ho in Holy Week, always raining in Colombia, <laughs> around the country. Hey, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. R uh, nice sunny weather instead of rain, right? <sighs> for yes. sure. Cool. Um, hey, listen, guys, I was just going over the information for today. Um, I just want to give you, before I say hello to everybody, just because I have it, these are the the vocabulary words that we're going to be using today, okay? So if you guys can copy and paste that. Today is a, a reading vocabulary class, so these are all the words um, that we're going to be concentrating on. Uh, I, uh, sorry, I, I have to... Was, do you continue working on Holy Week in Kalingo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Kalingo never stops. We were even open on uh, on Christmas. Christmas and New Year's, uh -huh. right? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Never, never stops. Never oh, stops. Great. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So yeah. Um, anyway, so there's the list, guys, uh, of the words we're going to be looking at today, just so that you have it before we get started. And Juan, how are you doing? Hi, hi, Daniel. Uh, you have a good weekend. Oh yeah, I can say. Yes. Yes, uh, yep. I, it was, well, ordinary, but uh, it was okay. All right. What about you? How was Oaxaca? Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was a long bus ride, though. To get to Oaxaca from uh, from the bus station from Tapo takes just over six hours. Six right. hours, so, yeah. Six hours yeah, on the bus. Do you work to the ruins to... No, uh, Tim, I've been to Monte Alban before, before. Uh, so, yeah. so this time um, I was with my girlfriend and really wanted to show her the town and eat delicious food, so we ate lots of great uh, Oaxa Oaxacanian food, yeah. and uh, it's a really beautiful town, right? Really, really yeah. colonial and, and nice. So. Well, yeah. yeah, it is very beautiful, but uh, what I like the most is the food. The food, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me too. I I like I like the restaurants they have though, because you can sit around and they have lots of good restaurants just to relax on the zocalo and, and yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know, but uh, nowadays in Oaxaca there was a lot of demonstrators, so it was a conflict. Almost always there in the. Oh yeah, God. well, there was a big, a big thing with the teacher strike in Oaxaca, right? Yeah. When was that? Maybe six years ago now, or more? Well, I, I don't remember, but I, it, it's it's been for a long time. Yeah, yeah. No, it it was beautiful and very hot, very hot during the day. It was thirty three degrees. Do you taste the how? Is the oh my god, what's the beverage there? Mezcal. Uh, oh my god. El mezcal, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, with chili, chilito y limón. Mm. Yeah, no, they've got you know what you know what I really love from Oaxaca is the yeah. the hot chocolate. Oh ah, yeah. The chocolate yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For sure. Uh, hey, hey, Lorenzo, good to see you again. Welcome back. Hello, hey. Daniel. All right, I'm there. here. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I was just making sure. Making sure. Okay, okay. Cool. And uh, Luis. Good morning. <laughs> good Everyone. morning. How are you? Good. Uh, I was just talking to Juan about uh, about your country. I, I I went down to Oaxaca for the weekend. And yeah, I I was listening to 
How are you, Daniel? Today, good. yeah, really good. Well, uh, th good. Today, I have a, a big test. We're uh, we're starting a new um, English course for Spanish-speaking beginners. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous trying to get prepared. <laughs> Why? <Anyway. laughs> I've got time. Well, it's it's um, in four hours. But it's, it's uh, for, for beginner students, for, for very beginner students. So. Uh -huh. You are going to pass it. You are intelligent, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, smart, smart <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's new. So uh, trying to figure out exactly how everything works. And it's going to be cool, I think. I think it's going to be really cool. It's uh, just about learning the, the system, right? I can watch I wish, uh, from the lobby. Yes. I think you can, but I think you have to join the course. You have to sign up for the course. I asked to, to join in the lobby? Yes. I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. Um, I think. So, so you are studying it also <laughs> in Colingo, Daniel? Par pardon me, Luis? Yeah. yeah. No, you, are, no, you are studying Colingo too? No, no, not studying. I, I'm teaching <laughs> English. Oh. But it's but it's for um, for Spanish speakers, so I translate a lot of words. Oh, in right, I understand. Okay. For people who have a very basic level or no English oh, at all, almost nothing. Uh, yeah, almost nothing. Yeah. Like, almost nothing. Yeah, I know. So today we'll be talking about the verb to be. Oh. That's, that's basic, right? I will try to be basic. in the lobby uh, to help you with my Spanish. Cool. Spanish. I try. That would be good. The first level. <laughs> the first level, yeah. Yeah. And then we talk about basic things this week, like you talk about the family, we talk about numbers, we talk about the verb to have and mm -hmm. uh, nationalities. Countable yeah. and uncountable. No. Yeah, that kind of thing. So very basic. Stuff. Yeah, I remember when I used to have it. <laughs> the, the... Takes you back, right? With the birth of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a long way. It's a yeah, yeah. It's a big a big ladder, right? A big ladder to get to the top. It takes takes some time. <laughs> uh, hey Peter, welcome back. Hello, and it's so frustrating if you start out in a foreign language. Yeah. Because you want to talk, but you can't. <laughs> yeah, not sure. Not sure. But, but he has a, a good Spanish level, uh, Peter. My level, well, it's okay. No, I'm talking about the pupils, not not ah, about Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes, yes. No, yeah, no, it's it's really tough. You're right. Yeah, you get frustrated, and uh, and some days, Peter, it's like you think, wow, this language is so easy. I'm gonna learn it so fast, and then you get to a, a wall and you hit it, right? And you're like, no, this language is much more difficult than I thought. I can't say anything I want to say. I don't understand anybody, right? <laughs> language does that. You know, what because I'm really interested to learn a new language, but I'm so frustrated. Uh, French, uh, it looks, it looks so strange. <laughs> because English, at least, or, or German, uh, you can almost uh, say what you read, more or less. Yeah. More so in German, actually, but uh, in French, it's it's really frustrating because what you see is not what you say. You don't pronounce it the same, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, hey, at least at least it's the same alphabet. You're using the Roman alphabet. I think uh -huh. okay. learning learning Chinese, learning Mandarin or Cantonese would be yeah. very difficult, right? You have to learn a whole new language too, a whole new alphabet. You have to learn painting for a start. If you want. painting, you have to learn how to become an artist first. <laughs> cool. Uh, hello, Ramiro. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? It was a long time. Yeah, I'd say a very yeah, long I time. Back to, I get back to college. When, when did we have class together last, Ramiro? Uh, I think uh, two, uh, more, maybe three months ago, I think. Yeah, I was going to say. I think it was like around Christmas or New Year's or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I, I just was uh, uh, very busy with all uh, trips and all stuff like that. Right. 
That sounds okay. Sounds okay. Taking some trips. <laughs> yeah, vacation trips and you know parties. <laughs> right, right. Busy guy. <laughs> Good. Have you been enjoying your life? Uh, how? Have you, have you been enjoying your life? Having a good time? Yes, yes, always. Uh, I think is the is the when you have a free time. I mean, uh, you have to do what you want and also what you like. Uh, right. Because uh, I think is the 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 best way to. Uh, Release all your your stress or your frustrations or your problems and whatever you know. For sure, for sure. Hey, hey, uh, Ramiro, do you have any plans for Semana Santa for Holy Week? Uh, for Holy Week, uh, not well. My my friends uh, told me to make a trip, uh, but I'm not sure about that. I. I think I'm thinking that I prefer to stay in my home and just get relaxing for those days and nothing, nothing more. Maybe a, a little bit of reunion with my old friends and that's all. Cool, cool, excellent. And so, uh, Ramiro, where are you living right now? I'm in Lima, Lima, Peru. You're in Lima. You're in Lima. Okay, cool. Yeah. Is your family from Lima as well? Yes. All yes. right. Nice. Well, you get to hang out with family and, and old friends and stuff. Nice. That's cool. <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I don't know why, but uh, I'm not a religious person, but uh, all my family uh, hate this this uh, that weekend. I mean, the Holy Week. Uh, very uh, formal because they are. Uh, uh, a religious person, I'm not. Uh, okay, I, I I respect that. And for me, it's, uh, for me, it's no problem to eat meat and all the stuff that it's supposed is prohibited. But I'm taking very very well with them. Sure. Well, I I don't know if everybody knows this. I, I think um, looking around the room, we have lots of people from from Latin uh -huh. America. Yeah. So these people all know about. Uh, the holiday, right? Easter's Easter or Semana Santa is uh, a pretty big thing, right? So um, yeah. it's 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 kind of the biggest celebration um, of the of of the year for for Catholics and and many Christians, right? It's mm -hmm. bigger bigger than Christmas as far as uh, significance goes, I think. Yeah, in, in some places, I mean, in, in Lima, in the capital, uh, it's not uh, that. That big uh, stuff, but maybe another another uh, province of, of Peru, uh, for example, uh, Arequipa, Ayacucho, some another cities. Uh, uh, there's there's an important thing uh, you you can find a thousand or thousand of people uh, going with a. Uh, in a procession, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's, 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 a procession right? or, or the, even the yeah, it, they're they're very uh, elaborate. I know in Arequipa they have got everybody's dressed in purple and they have the yeah. statue yeah. of, of mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah, it's the same in Popayan. It's the religious city of Colombia. Oh, okay, yeah, like like a parade almost, like a parade. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Right. Uh, like a parade, but it's not uh, for well. I mean, it, it, you can find there also uh, a lot of food, a lot of uh, 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 alcohol, and a lot of uh, <laughs> even uh, some music for bands, and and it's it really, really good. You can it's like you a can, party. You can have really, really, really fun. Yeah. It's kind of a party, uh, a special uh, religious party. I mean, I don't know. Ah uh, yes, and they drink in in this. Uh... Holiday, yeah, they drink week. a lot. They, they drink a lot of alcohol every every yeah. every day of the five days. Uh, you, you can go. find a lot of uh, uh, people, uh, but uh, man, it's good. I mean, every everybody is having fun. 
uh, is great. The bad thing is that you, you can uh, you can find uh, an empty space in the hotel or uh -huh. because everybody is yeah. in there and it's full and every is expensive. Everything is expensive. Sure. Yeah. No. It's it's uh, yeah. Big 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 events, right? Big events. They get full. Yeah, big. Cool. Well, it's exciting, and, and it's it's definitely true that the smaller smaller villages are a lot more traditional, right? Smaller towns are traditional than the big city, like like Lima or Bogota or or Mexico City, right? Where um, people are more you know focused on business and and doing mm -hmm. their work and and things like yeah. that. Yeah. You don't have the, the same traditional classes. So there you go. Um. Hey, Sakutara, how's it going? I didn't yet. I'm okay. Hey, hey, how's it going today? Yes, uh, that is a good day for me. Good, good weekend? It's uh, not so bad. All right, <laughs> all right, cool. Good to hear. And, and Victor, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, hello again. Hey, hey. Uh, hey, I see in the chat here, Ta Tariq seems a little bit upset. Well, Tariq, you know... When we start our classes, it's nice to talk to everybody, say hello uh, to the people. Sarah, the too. Sarah is uh, angry as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like to talk to the people in the class and then talk to the people in the lobby um, and you know practice our English, not just talking about the lesson, but using our English too, right? So, so it's nice to have you here, Tariq. Uh, welcome to class. Uh, Suad, I see you there as well. Hello. Good to see you today. Uh, Aden. Alfred, see, hey guys, good to see you. Shalon, wow, Ruka, lots of people here today, so that's awesome. Uh, Camila, good to see you as well. Wow, uh, so excellent. We have lots of people. Uh, Yogo, Yogo, I like that name, Yogo. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Lara was here at the beginning. I don't know if Lara's still here. I think she is. Hello, Lara, if you're around. Good to see you. Cool. Well, hey guys, um, so what's happening? What's happening today is we're talking about um, a reading, okay? We're going to do a reading and learn a little bit of new vocabulary, okay? So I gave this list before, but here it is again. This is the vocabulary that we'll be studying today. So uh, if there are any words there that you don't understand, that's, uh, that's what we're looking at. So to start with, today's topic, guys, is actually about um, about language. Okay? We were talking a little bit about language at the beginning there, and and Peter Peter pointed out, yeah, you know, language sucks at the beginning. It's so frustrating. You look at it, and you think, huh, I don't even know where to start, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about linguistics today. Can anybody tell me what do we mean when we say linguistics? What does that mean? Language, idiot. Yeah. The science of languages. The, the yeah. science of languages, right? So if, if linguistics is the science of languages and the study of languages, what is a linguist? People who study linguistics. There you go, yeah. People who study languages. What do you guys think? Would you consider us to be, lang to be linguists? If you study at least two or three languages, well, maybe I think I think to learn another language you have to be a little bit of a linguist because you need to understand where words come from. Mm -hmm. right? And I think when you study and you learn, okay, this has a uh, a Latin root and this has a Germanic roots and this has a different roots, you know. You learn where the words come from. It really helps on how to to speak. So, by studying any language, um, you become a linguist to some level because you need to understand how language works, right? And where it comes from is a big part of it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's get straight to the readings because every class it seems like. We never have enough time to finish the readings and, and do all the other stuff. So I want I want to start directly with the readings today. Okay. I'll make it nice and big. Everybody in the class will get a chance to read. Let me make this nice and big. And uh, and then I, and then we're gonna do if we have time, 
a few exercises to practice studying some of the language. So, um, Juan, can we start with you? Could you read for us the first paragraph? Okay. Can no humans use language? Some linguists say that there is the ability of humans to acquire and use language that differentiates them from all other animals. Yet, other animals too use symbols to communicate. Bees perform a dance that tells other bees where they found source of nectar. The groans and gestures of chimpanzees signify varying desires and emotions. This form of communication do not necessarily have the grammatical characteristics of language. However, not with notwithstanding this obvious difference, some experts have devo devo devoted many years of their careers to ongoing studies of the linguistic capabilities of animals. Cool. So this is pretty interesting, actually, because they're talking, you know, about animals being able to communicate. Mm -hmm. And I want to just very quickly just say that, um, you know, my sister, when she when she had a baby, one thing that she read was it's very difficult for babies to communicate, but their brains actually develop the ability to communicate much earlier than they can speak. So my sister taught her her son uh, sign language, sign language before he could speak, and so before he could speak, he was already doing sign language for saying "I'm hungry." Gestures. Right? Gestures, yeah. So, so using hand language instead of his mouth to say the, the things that he wanted. So it's uh, it's cool, right? Communication isn't just speaking, right? It's it's definitely language as well. So yeah. Interesting stuff. What was her method to, to do that? You know what? I'm not exactly sure, Ramiro. It's probably a lot like, does anybody know uh, Pavlov's dog? Oh, yeah. Right? Ring so, a bell. And, and yeah, ringing food. a bell. <laughs> 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 a, series, a series of rewards, right? It's the idea of giving rewards uh, when when... Stuff. When somebody does something that uh, that they are supposed to do, you give them a reward, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think this was a big thing. Hey, I saw there were a couple of words there, uh, Juan, that you read at the beginning. I just wanted to go over them. What is a grunt? <clears throat> What's grunt? what? What does it mean, grunts? It's like a, the sound of uh, some animals. The grunts. Okay. Uh, sound of animals. My uncle makes grunts too. It's like, <laughs> right? so it's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's like a, a deep sound where you, you don't really say anything. You just make a sound, but you can do it like uh, the dog. Like a dog. A dog would be a bark, but it's the sound bark. where you can you can still um, express something. So. If you, for example, if you say to say I don't know, you go, uh, uh, right? It means I don't know, right? You say, uh, uh, okay. uh. that means no, I don't want it. Uh huh, uh huh, right? It's a grunt still, but saying yes, right? Uh, okay. You can still communicate with grunts. There's still ways to communicate. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So here we've got some main language here. What does this mean? Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. Has anybody ever heard that despite expression? Of. Despite? In spite of. Despite of. Dis sure, despite. So what does that mean, despite? Despite. Despite is. By the way, without being affected by like something, uh, without being affected by something. Sure, yeah, without being affected. So we might even say it's a transition word. So we could say, like, even though, right? Even though, despite. Okay. So even though one thing happens, something else happens. Okay. Then we have the word uh, Juan. Can you explain for us the experts? What do we mean by experts? Experts. Uh, okay, when well, you are, um, uh, oh my God, 
I know that, but I, I don't know how to explain. Uh, when you are, uh, or you have the capability in something? Sure. For, yeah, yeah. You, you so have like, many experience. The experience, the capability. You, when you're a professional in something, right? Mm -hmm. okay. A professional would be an expert, right? Somebody who's very good at a specific thing. Juan, what does the word devoted mean? Do you know? Devoted. Uh, be into uh, something. Right, yeah, exactly. To really be into something, right? So we could say there are some students here who are devoted to English, right? Devoted to English. It means they spend a lot of time studying English and a lot of effort studying English, so they're devoted. Okay. Uh, exactly, Alfred. Yeah, expending a lot of time. Um, there you go. And lots of experience. Exactly, so I Um Okay. What about ongoing studies? What does that mean? Continued. Continuing. Continuing. Yeah, studies Continue. that go on. Continuing study. Yeah. There you go. Ongoing. Yeah. There, there it is. There it is. Servet, yes, you would definitely be a devoted student. No question. No question. Uh, cool. Sakuritara, can you read for us? Oh, no, sorry, we're going the other way. Liliana, can you read for us the next yeah. paragraph? Uh, over the last 40 years, several researches have asserted that non humans can master language. Chimpanzees and gorillas have been the most pop popular targets of study because at maturity they are estimated to have the intelligence of two or three year old children who are usually well on their way to learning language. Dolphins too have been studied because they have a complex communication system and exceptionally large brains relative to their body size. I do think that if these animals were unable, unable to learn language, their general intelligence could not be blamed. Instead, failure. How can I read this word, uh, Daniel? Failure. 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 Failure would be attributed to the absence of a generic makeup that permits language learning. Perfect. Okay. Very good. So some other big words here. And guys, if there are any words that are not in bold that you don't understand, ask me because there are some big words. First of all, what do we mean by this? Because at maturity, at maturity, so talking about ch chimpanzees at maturity, what does that mean? Adults, adults. When you grow, when you grow, when you grow, grow up. Exactly. So when we're talking about chimpanzees at maturity, we're talking about when they are the most intelligent in their life. Okay, when they're when they're most developed, when their brains are developed, their bodies are developed. Okay, and so it says chimpanzees, when they are at maturity, are estimated to have the intelligence of two or three-year-old children. Okay, that's pretty interesting. What do we mean by intelligence? That's an easy word here. Smart. The ability to to understand or to. Do. Right. Yeah, the, the smarts are the ability to understand, right? So this is kind of cool. Chimpanzees, they say, yeah, have the intelligence of two or three-year-old children. They are, they are the most intelligent uh, animals? Well, I don't know. This is interesting because then in the next sentence they talk about dolphins. And I've heard that dolphins are the most intelligent animals outside of humans. Mm -hmm. so. But chimpanzees and all dolphins are both talked about. Chimpanzees' uh, brain are, are similar, like humans. Not the same, but similar, like humans. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it says here, dolphins too have been studied because they have a complex communication system. What does that mean? Complex communication system. Complicated. 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 But, but. When we say complicated, that's true. It, it also means very um, 
hard, intricate, hard. Lots, of, lots of details to it, right? Sophisticated? Sophisticated, good, yes. Sophisticated. No simple. No simple. Not simple. No simple. Not simple. So, and when we're talking about complex communication system, what does that mean? Uh, many ways to do it. Right. But what do we mean by communication system in that sentence? They use many different uh, sounds. Many, to many sounds to communicate. Many many sounds. ways to communicate. Good, exactly. Like rums, like like rums or um, hair shirt. Sure, grunts. M movement. <laughs> Does anybody know what the sound is that a uh, that the dolphin makes in uh, the water? What they call is that? it called mm -hmm. supersonic? Yeah. Close, close. We call it sonar. Uh, sonar. 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 It's the, it's the, uh -huh. Right through the water, this echoing kind of sound. That they make. Right. I think humans can't hear most of those sounds, no? We can't hear most of them. It's more complex. Sounds, yeah. mm -hmm. More complex than we can fully understand. So, uh, yeah, people don't understand the way the dolphins communicate. Still. No, no, I mean here, to be able to hear that. Oh yes, because because yeah. it's sonar, because uh, the 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 pitch of the, those sounds is so high. Yeah, and Peter, they use a lot of uh, machinery now to to detect it, right? This mm -hmm. this is part of the war machine, actually. It's like uh, submarine. Yeah. I'm a scientist, okay. I thought the dolphins use lots of machinery now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the dolphins have started using machinery now. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. A any other words? Any other questions there, guys? Mm. No. Asserted? Mm. What does uh, that exact, uh, exactly mean? Mm. Asserted target, I mean. Yeah. S sorry, where is it? Uh, several asserted. researchers have the top. that non humans it's came the first line. The first sentence. The first line, Daniel. The first uh, sentence uh, in that paragraph over the last. Asserted, years. asserted. Yeah, good. Thank asserted. you. Asserted. What does this mean? It's, does anybody know what we mean when we say asserted? Right here. It's like a target. Not exactly. Not exactly. I, I, a little bit. It's kind of like to. Um, the, the, they have the reason. They have the reason. Right. We, we might also say to claim. Oh, okay. To claim. Yeah, it's like to say something, to to, to say something um, very powerfully. Like a statement? A statement, or maybe even a thesis a little bit, right? A thesis of the idea, this is what I believe. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Like certain information about it. But yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so, so this is what they've said, right? The, these... Researchers have said, "Listen, we've done studies that say non-humans can master language." Okay. To assert somebody, and when we talk, there's another word. Does anybody know the word assertive? Just make sure. Make sure. Assertive. This, this is used like um, an adjective to describe somebody. If we say, "Well, he's a very assertive person." Okay. It means aggressive. aggressive. Not ex sort of a little bit, but it means he says what he wants. Okay. A person who says what he wants is assertive. Okay. So a good boss, a good boss is assertive. Okay. They good. say, okay, today I need you to do this job. I need you to do this job. I'm going to do this job. So it's saying this is what needs to happen. Very direct, assertive. All right, energetic. Have, energetic, but gi giving no, no, no. giving commands, specific commands. Okay, knowing what. Uh, it's, a, it's a behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. It's talking about the behavior. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is uh, exactly the meaning of headstrong? Does it go the? Uh, has it got uh, the same meaning, or is it different? <laughs> Similar, but when you say headstrong, you might also mean a little bit stubborn. Okay. Uh, mm. Headstrong, I think, would be closer to stubborn. So it goes into the negative. A little bit. A little bit. Headstrong's not. I think if you say stubborn, 
that's more negative. Headstrong is uh-huh. assertive and stubborn. It's somewhere in the middle between okay. the two. Okay. I think I think assertive is the uh, the people that they are direct command. They give direct commands, but in, in the best way, in a good way. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think so, Ramiro. I, I think assertive is. Um, we would look at it as, as a positive quality. Somebody who's assertive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, hey guys, I know we're, we don't always in these classes we don't always follow the words that are on the page. We're often new, finding new words too. So there you go. Uh, okay, cool. Lorenzo, do you want to read for us the next paragraph? Okay, thank you. The question of whether non-human mammals can learn to use language is not a simple, a simple, simple one. For at least two reasons. First, language is more than just communication. But defining just when animals are exhibiting that something more is a source of debate. What seems to be, what seems to differen- differentiate human language from the Hesher, grunge, chirps, whistle, or, sc- or cries of other, of other animals <coughs> is grammar. A formal set of rules for combining words, also because of their anatomical structures, non-human mammals will never be able to speak in the same way that the humans do, do. To test this animal's ability to learn language, investigators therefore must de- devise innovative ways for them to communicate. All right. So this is interesting as well. And, and before, first of all, let's look. What does this mean? Debate. A discussion. If we say, if we say, um, first of all, this is kind of a difficult sentence to understand. So, first, language is more than just communication. But just just defining when animals are exhibiting that something more. Okay, this is you see, it's in quotations because this is a, not a real thing. Something more is this. It's an idea. More. Something more. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when are animals so doing nice. something special? Mm-hmm. Is a source of debate. What does that mean? Is a source of debate. An informal discussion. Yeah. Discussion. Not exactly. Confrontation. Confrontation. Closer, yeah. And to express oppos- opposing, opposing views. Something. But Liliana, I want you to look at this specific situation. I don't want you to think of the definition. I want you to look at it in this context. Okay. 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 Is a source of debate. So obviously when we say it's a source of debate, we're not talking about two political parties coming together and talking, uh, arguing over something. Right? Uh, in Spanish, is, uh, this is the meaning the, of debate. In English too, that's the meaning. That doesn't yeah, yeah. mean not everyone agrees. The, con- the, 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 the yeah, context. So the context is different. Oh, no, yes, context. yes, I understand the context, but uh, I mean the general meaning. All right. Well, in this context, is a source of debate. It means everybody, like you said, Peter, everybody does not agree on this. Okay? It's a source of debate means everyone does not agree with this. Okay? So some people, well, what, what is it that's, if it's a source of debate, what are people debating? What, is, what are the two sides? The animals can't uh, communicate. Right? And things that they they can't exactly. So that's the source of the debate. Some people think animals can communicate, and some people think that they cannot. Okay. Yeah. So what we have here, though, is they also point out that people. Some people think because of their anatomical structures, non-human animals will never be able to speak in the same way that humans. What does that mean? Anatomical structures. Yeah, they have not the necessary for to talk or to pronounce uh, words. Exactly. They don't have the same mouths and ability, right? Their tongue. Their tongue, right? The way their mouth moves, does not allow mm. them. To... 
the the jaw the jaw church good yeah good guy so this so this is why it says that to test these animals ability to learn language investigators therefore must devise innovative ways for them to communicate what does that mean must devise innovative ways for them to communicate on them to uh, uh, to transforms maybe yeah some to kind device. of technology we need some kind of technology to help animals communicate right yeah even in humans sorry use daniel it. device is a, like a uh, discover when we talk about a device we're usually talking mm -hmm. about um similar to an invention let's say mm -hmm. okay an invention okay so a device is something that helps helps do something else so a computer is a device okay a uh, telephone is a device for talking to people from far away a television is a device for seeing pictures and hearing sounds that are not there Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I know what is device, but I, I always thought that device would has to be right uh, with e, not with s. Because Ramiro, this is not the word device. This is the word device. Yeah, there is with this c. Is a device. Device is, is like a component. I mean, uh, uh, mm -hmm. a, a device is a thing, an invention. But the the word device to devise is a verb to devise something. What does it mean to devise something? Uh, to invent. To invent. To invent or create. Yeah. To invent or create means to devise. To plan. Yeah, to plan something out. Exactly. When when we're talking about plans, we can devise a plan, right? Create a plan, invent a plan. Mm. Cool, excellent. Um, okay, Luis, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Wow, I'm here. James, what is that? I'm not sure. No, James, are you there? Someone is trying. I'm <laughs> trying to get someone so to speak. <laughs> you were fine. I'm not sure what that was. Interesting. Luis is showing us how to grunt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were, yeah. We were <laughs> <laughs> the class on grunting. There you go. Uh, Luis, can you give us? Uh, can you read for us the next paragraph? Of course. Dave and Anna Premack told their chimps search to communicate by placing differently chip, chip, chipped chips, each symbol in. Symbolizing a war on a magic board, 1971, Lana, a chimpanzee studied by Dan Rombaut, 1977, learned to follow instructions to communicate by pressing, pressing keys on a specially designed computer. American Sign Language, ASL, that hand gesture language used by different people has been used by betrayed betrays and Helen Gardner with the sheep was whole and by Herbert Terrace with Nimi Chimsky and okay, Kanasi. We'll, we'll, we'll stop right there Luis. We'll see All right. there. Uh, Peter asks what is a chimp? What do we mean when we have here the word chimp guys? Chimpanzee. The chimpanzee. chimpanzee. Yeah it's short for chimpanzee. Okay let's see. Uh, Peter in the lobby there has asked, so there you go, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's look at a few words here. First thing, Luis, I heard you say magic. This actually says magnetic. Okay. Or, yeah, what do we Mag mean by Mag magnetic? Magnetic. He's using magnets. Using magnets, yeah, using magnets. Right. Magnetic. And we also have here to communicate by placing differently shaped chips. What do we mean when we say chips? Are we talking about like potato chips for eating? No, no, no. no. <laughs> chips from a computer. Computer chips. Finger, 
it was actually stars and squares and and rounds and uh, things like that as far as yeah. I remember and different <laughs> colors also yellow ah. blue green there you go peter peter it sounds like you know about this study well i've seen that on on television a long time ago yeah yeah it's pretty cool actually yeah when we talk about chips you might also does everybody know the game poker yeah Right? Yes, the cards. You, you, you gamble with poker chips, okay? The little circle things that you get at the casino, those are poker chips. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about chips, we're usually talking about small, small objects that are flat, okay? So in this case, you're right. They were using stars, circles, squares, triangles, Peter, with different colors, and they were flat and had magnets on them. So you could put them on a magnetic board. Uh, but you guys are also right. It could also be electric drives, right? When you talk about chips, you can have computer chips as well. Not in this case, though. Okay. So that's interesting. So this was one, one study they did showing chimpanzees communicating with symbols, right? And then another study shows they could follow instructions. What does it mean to follow instructions? Steps. Be guidelines. Right, steps, guidelines. Good. Okay. The, almost the rules, right? The rules to follow. Um, so by pressing keys on a computer, so they've got, in the set, 1977, they had chimpanzees already using computers. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Same thing, kind of what I talked about earlier today with um, about my my nephew, right? Hand gesture languages used by deaf people, which we call sign language, right? Everybody know that. In, when we talk about people who are deaf, people who cannot hear, we say mm -hmm. sign language, mm -hmm. using your hands to make gestures. Braille, braille method. Like Braille, like Braille, but this Braille is when you have the little dots on paper and they feel the dots, right? Sign language is, is when you use your hand to ah, yes. make communication. Yeah, yeah. You are not blind. Italian uses a lot of hand language. <laughs> that's true, Alfred, but that's different. That's different than sign language. You mean like this? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I think Italians are pretty famous for using their hands when they speak. Um, cool. So let's let's continue there. Um, Luis, can you read? Continue from Aunt Cassie. In Aunt Cassie, a bombo, commonly known as a pygmy. Pygmy chimpanzee. Chimpanzee studied by Su Savage Rambold in 1990 to 1993. Learned to re recognize spoken words and to communicate by both gesturing and preaching words, symbol keys on a computer that would speak for him. All right. Hey, that's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. hey. This isn't much different than communicating, right? This is the same as language for an animal. If they if they can press buttons that say something, this is communication, is it not? Yeah. Right. Does anybody know a famous scientist who does this? Oh uh, yes, from from the UK. Uh, uh, what's his name? The 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 uh, Mar sitting in a wheelchair with yeah. that uh, brittle bone disease. Exactly. Uh, what's his Stephen name Hawking. again? Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Right. Stephen Hawking. Right. Yeah, Stephen famous Hawking. famous scientist uh, who's always studying about space and and black holes and and uh, really really interesting things, right? He's actually so, on an ad uh, in the United uh, Kingdom for black holes. It's actually for an insurance company. <laughs> it's quite Oh, funny. really? <laughs> <laughs> they suck, suck someone into a black hole. And he <laughs> said, oh, nice. Well, with his machine, with his computer. His, the machine voice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah because, he, I mean, he's in a wheelchair, right? And all he can do is move, I think. Uh -huh. Well, he can't move anymore. Uh, the, uh, he's only able to move his eyes. 
So his eyes, somehow they have him hooked up to a machine where his moving eyes... I think the camera follows his eyes move, uh, uh, his eye movements somehow. Right. Because before he was still able to move his head, but he can't uh, do that anymore. So now, now he communicates through eye movements, and then a computer senses his eye movements, and and a computer voice speaks. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So similar kind of idea that they're doing with chimpanzees. Right. I'm sure that none of these chimpanzees though are discovering any black holes or anything in space. <laughs> no. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, Peter, can you read the next paragraph for us? Uh, studies of these animals suggested that they could spontaneously manipulate combinations of words to refer to things that were not present. Uh, Washu, Lana, Sarah, Nim and Kenzie all mastered between 130, uh, 100 30 and 500 words. Their vocabulary included names for concrete objects such as apple or me, verbs such as tickle and eat, adjectives such as happy and big, and adverbs such as again. Uh, the animals incorporated the words into sentences expressing uh, wishes such as you tickle me or if Sarah good then apple. Sometimes uh, these sentences refer to things in the past. Finally, all these animals seem to enjoy their communication devices and use them spontaneously to interact and form mutinal bonds with their caretakers. All right, so cool. cool. Hey, if anybody um, is interested in this, I actually found a movie. Um, I'm trying to think. I think it was called... Project Nim. Has anybody heard of this? Yeah, that's what it's called. So you see one of the chimpanzees they talk about there? It's called Nim. Can anybody see it? Washo, Lana, Sarah, Nim, and Kenzie. These are all chimpanzees, okay? There's a movie called mm. Project Nim. It's a documentary. And it's very interesting. Mm. About, uh, about this kind of thing. So check that out if you can find it. Um, but this is pretty amazing, right? They had between 130 and 500 words. That's that's a lot of words, right? That's mm. a lot of words for them to understand because most of these are probably very um, specific words, either verbs or nouns that really explain things. Right? So, quite cool. Um, Guys, what does this word mean up here? Manipulate combinations. Manipulate. Control. Control. Control, yeah. But Handle. not just control Handle. what? Handle, manage. Yeah, yeah. And usually to change something change. a little bit, right? You're changing and controlling it. Okay? So you're changing something, controlling it at the same time. It's to manipulate. Juan, is that a video for Project NIM? Yeah. Ah, cool. Excellent. Thanks for that. Uh, okay. Awesome. That's uh, excellent. The animals incorporated the words into sentences. What does that mean? To incorporate the words into sentences. Mm, to add, add? Include, include the words. Yeah, include them. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You guys are all correct. All correct. Right? So they use the words within the sentences. Okay? Finally, all these animals seem to enjoy their communication. And here we go. Here's the word devices. Not devise, but devices. Okay. Yes, different so, from the other from the other one. Yeah, devise is the verb. Device is With the S. a thing, the invention. So their communication devices. What is what are their communication devices? What do we mean a by computer? that? Computer could be? Yeah. They're, they're computers that had words on them, remember? They had word symbol keys on a computer. Okay. So that's their communication devices. But I think the most successful uh, project was uh, the one when they uh, taught them sign language. And I've seen a video about that. That looked really quite impressive. <clears throat> well, hey, uh, uh, Peter, have you seen this movie, Project NIM? 
Uh, I don't know. Is it about sign language? Beca because I've, I've seen a video about sign language. I think it includes sign language at the beginning and then and then goes deeper into it. Oh, but it's okay. it's a, a new documentary. I think it was one of the the best documentaries of the year last year. Okay, I have to see that. Because uh, yes. the one I saw uh, I, I saw a couple of years ago and that was uh, uh, about sign with uh, sign language only. Ah, okay. Okay. This, uh, this might be the same. I, I don't think so, though, because this has a little bit more in it. But see, see what you find in it. What does this mean, guys, to interact and form mutual bonds with their caretakers? What does it mean, form mutual bonds with their caretakers? A relationship. Communication, connection, something like that. Yeah, but what does the word mutual mean? Each other, to each other. Mutual. Yeah. Share. Shared, something that they have together, something shared. So if you have a mutual bond, it means the caretakers and the chimpanzees both felt something for each other, right? There was, it was a relationship. Exactly, Peter, like they were friends, right? Mutual, mutual bonds implies feelings? Which word? The, mutual the bond. bond. Yeah, mutual bond. Bond, bond is, is implying feelings. When you have a bond with somebody, it means you have a connection, a, a, an emotional connection to them is a bond. It's a link. Mutual okay. link. link. Yeah, a link. For a sure. link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And usually, though, when we say bond, we're talking about an emotional link. Okay. Uh, all right. Continuing on here, uh, Ramiro, can you read the next paragraph for us? Okay. Uh, many of the preliminary conclusions about primat language learning were challenged by Herbert Terras and his colleagues in their investigation of NIM. Terras noticed many sub subtle characteristics of NIM's communication that seemed incompatible with a child's use of, and he argued that animals in other uh, studies demonstrate uh, these same characteristics. All right. First, okay. That's all, right? Or yeah, I could that's, no, that's good for now. That's good for now. So, many of the preliminary conclusions. What does the word preliminary mean? Mm, before, uh, first. The first. 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 Preliminary means first. Okay. So when we have preliminary first. conclusions, what does that mean? The whole idea. Exactly. So we can we can say early results, right? So the first the first results from the tests. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first research, thanks, Peter. Yeah, the first findings, right? What the the results from their research? These are the first. Um, the, 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 the the first things. First, they find. Daniel. Yes. Preliminary conclusion is not the first research. Why not? Because this first research, refer the first research, can lead you to the preliminary conclusion, but it's not the same. What? Uh, okay. So, sort of, you're sort of right, Alfred. The preliminary, the preliminary conclusions are the first findings. Yeah, they're the first things that that they can say. This is what we believe. Okay. So it is sort of the the first results, yeah. right? Yes. I'm not saying I'm not saying the first thing they went in there and the monkey was eating a banana. That's their first result, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about this is the first thing that they could say. Okay, this is what we found. This is what we believe. Yes, it right? is. So th those would be the, sort of the first results. Their their first theory, sure. Okay. Um. Okay, then we have the word, and his colleagues. What are colleagues? With your work, people. Work with. 
You have yeah, the same professional partner. Professional then, partner. Partner. Not even partners. The people you work with. So even your boss is a colleague if you are working together. If you're working close together, right? He's a colleague as well. So the people you work with. Okay. Okay. Uh, Terrace noticed many subtle characteristics of Nim's communication that seemed incompatible with a child's use of language. What does that mean? Incompatible. Incompatible. No it's not the same. It's not comp <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. It, it, it means you can't it mix. It. They don't mix. They, they're, they're different. They weren't what you expected. Or, or much. Yeah. They're it, not doesn't, a match. it doesn't get along well? Can I they that? don't get along well, sure. So th this, I, not, not that the chimpanzee doesn't get along well with the child, right? They're saying that the results were incompatible. So 